Hello, uh, my name is Rebecca Kathlin and I'm one of the eighth grade technology and engineering teachers. If your child has my name on their schedule this year for tech and engineering, they have me for robotics this year. I teach all three grade levels. I teach sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade. So if your, um, your child might have had me before as a teacher or maybe as a um, monitor in our quiet study. This is a robotics lab in um, my classroom. There's another robotics lab that Mr. Blosey has. But I'll just show you around. Um, this is what it looks like in my classroom. This is the third year that your child has been um, in middle school, probably. Um, and you may or may not have ever been in the building, depending on um, if you've had the opportunity to come to an in-person back to school night when your child was in sixth grade. So that's why I wanted to give you a look around at the room. Um, can't really see any robots yet. You can see the big banner in back of me for Western Robotics. I am also the coach of the Western Middle School Robotics team and the Western High School Robotics team. It's not a, um, a club, it's a, it's a competitive team. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can email me at Rebecca Kaplan at westernps.org. Um, your child has had an opportunity to apply for the team um, during class time or during the school days. Um, and you might want to know if they have uh, opted to do that. Anyway, so the class for automation and robotics is different than the competitive team. And I'm going to share some of the details about that course right here. Okay, so what we're going to be doing in this class is we're going to be doing a little bit of investigation on, you know, what robots are and what they're used for, which changes all the time. Um, so right now your students are in the middle of, or actually the very beginning of a research project that they're doing with a small group of students on, and they choose a robot that they think is weird or funny or scary or interesting in some other way, and they research it and present it to the class in a short presentation using various types of technology to present. Um, what they're going to be doing for the rest of the year is we're going to be doing the work of a robotics or mechatronics engineer by creating solutions uh, to mechanical or robotics problems. So the, we're first going to learn how to create those gearing systems. As an example, you can see in the center here, um, there is a gearing system here. This is a differential, which we'll be learning how to build. And then as we add electronics and motors, things get a little bit more interesting. After we learn how to build the mechanical systems, we will be learning how to program them and add um, movement and autonomy using sensors. This is a photograph, this screenshot here on the left-hand side of the screen is a screenshot of the API, the programming environment that we use. It's called Robot C. It's sort of if JavaScript and C++ had a, had a baby. We use C++ in the robotics team at the system that we use for the classes is just a touch different. On the right hand side of the screen here, you can see some of the projects that your, might, your child might choose to build. There's a lot of creative choice in this class and very uh, seldom, unless we're doing a skills-based building unit, um, will the kids be given specific instructions on how to build something, but they'll be inventing their own designs. This is an example of a project that was done by students in the past. They chose to create a model of an elevator that would bring a platform up to different levels using various touch and vision sensors. So I'll just show you a very brief video of that in play. Okay, and then just to give you an idea of the type of program that students might write on their own um, for that particular project, you can see the program on the screen it gets cut off at the at the end, so you can't see the entire thing. But um, students uh, are using skills that they gained in sixth grade in the Scratch programming unit, and then um, using those skills to build a text-based program that will run. Um, a robot that they designed themselves. This is a line follower robot that um, a couple of students made last year. In the video, you can see they'll flip it over 
And you can see on top, you can see the microcontroller and the battery system that we use on the bottom. Uh, those are three light sensors that are set up in a line configure follower line follower configuration. And it's designed to be able to see that line on the floor and have the robot make decisions about which way to turn to continue following the line based on the light sensor feedback. I don't have an example of that program up. Um, we do lots of programs. These are kids that, uh, these are projects that kids choose and they develop on their own. I have a slideshow of a lot of things that we do. Um, I can show you, I take pictures all the time um, of your kids and sometimes I use those pictures um, at the end of the year. So you can get an idea. I'm not going to show you all the individual videos, but you get an idea that you know, if you see the kids are sitting at tables, collaborating, working, they've got screwdrivers in their hands, they're building, there's very little direct instruction. These students are looking at the board and manipulating a digital model so they can see how to build um, a section of the model that they're trying to build. You get an idea of the toolboxes and type of projects that uh, we work on. It's extremely hands-on class. I've been really clear with them on the things that they need to be successful in this class. And I think what I've seen so far, we did a quick project the first week of school. What I've seen so far is they're, they've already got what it takes to be successful in here, having a charged Chromebook and their engineering notebook, which I will give to them every day, um, will help them be successful. I will generally not give homework, but it doesn't mean that kids won't want to work on uh, projects that we're doing in class during quiet study or when I offer extra help. And to that end, I already went over all my procedures in class, but then the kids know that when I offer extra help is during quiet study. So uh, the eighth graders are really lucky. I have quiet, I teach all three grade levels, so the schedules are really weird, but um, I'm available during quiet study for them anytime. Um, they just have to see me and make sure that I have room in my class because sometimes a lot of kids want to come at once and I want to make sure we can remain socially distant this year. Um, if you have questions, please email me at Rebecca Kaplan, that's K-A-P-L-A-N, at westonps.org. Okay, have a great night.